In the tropics, the shallow waters just offshore are filled with colorful fish. It seems like one big beauty contest. These fish come in all colors of the rainbow. It's a stunning sight, but all those colors attract a lot of attention, and that's not always good, like when there are dangerous predators around. So if you don't want to be eaten, but you still want to stretch your stuff, you have to find a way to be secure. Some find security in numbers. These basslets are in school. That doesn't mean desks and homework. It means they swim in a group. This makes it hard for predators to single anybody out. It's just too confusing. The butterfly fish uses a tricky disguise. It has a marking on its back that looks just like a big eye. This can confuse predators by making them aim their attack in the wrong direction. But the tiny clownfish have come up with one of the most unique strategies of all. A security blanket that's alive. It's called an anemone. And once a clownfish makes friends with one, he lives in it for the rest of his life. The coral reefs of the Indian and Pacific Oceans are full of clownfish and anemones, and there are lots of different species. Clownfish are some of the most brightly colored fish on the reef, so they really need some security, and that's where the anemone comes in. Anemones may be pretty, but they're deadly too. Their tentacles contain harpoons filled with venom called nematocysts. When animals like fish touch the tentacles, the anemone shoots out hundreds, sometimes thousands of tiny harpoons. It's a big ouch for a little fish, and if the anemone is lucky, it curls up to get its fish dinner into its tiny mouth. No, this is not a big purple donut. This is what an anemone looks like when it is curled up. This is a dangerous time for the clownfish, since they don't have much room. But once the anemone has swallowed its food, it uncurls and the clownfish have more room to move around again. You may be wondering why the clownfish would want to live in a house decorated with stinging tentacles. Isn't that kind of dangerous? Not for the clownfish. Clownfish have a special coating of mucus that protects them from the anemone's sting. Other fish don't have this coating. That's good for the clownfish. Safe in its anemone, it knows that if predators come looking for trouble, they'll be sorry. The anemone gets something out of this partnership too. The clownfish defends it with life and fin. Some of the fish on the reef can eat anemone tentacles without getting a stomach ache. But the anemone doesn't have to worry. Its clownfish protectors don't let anyone get too close. The clownfish is so territorial that it will even attack its own reflection. Wow, it sure is hard to win when you're fighting against yourself. So the clownfish protects the anemone, and the anemone protects the clownfish. It's a unique win-win relationship called mutualism. The clownfish really depends on its anemone security blanket when it's time to spawn. The little fish deposit their eggs underneath their anemone. It's like sweeping them under the carpet. With all those stinging tentacles overhead, this spot is pretty safe. Look at those tiny black spots. Believe it or not, those are clownfish embryos. Once they are hatched, the baby clownfish leave their parents' home while they're still kids. They need to find their own anemone. And with this much to choose from, they're like kids in a candy store. 